<laughs> Have you ever read a book that makes you want to set fire to small woodland creatures? A lot of classic books actually have this effect on me. I, I like stories, so when a, the, the plot is obscured by an author's prolix descriptions, I find myself in a frustrated situation. I'm Mark Jones, and Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness is 3 of 52. First published in 1902, Heart of Darkness was inspired by the time Joseph Conrad spent as a riverboat captain on the Congo in Africa. Joseph Conrad isn't his birth name, but uh, his, his birth name is a very long Polish name, which I don't feel like pronouncing right now. But he left home at the age of 16, spent 20 years at sea, and uh, by and by became a master of the English language. Heart of Darkness is told in a first-person narrative uh, through the eyes of Marlowe, who's basically representative of Conrad himself. This book is written in such a way that the sheer volume of descriptive language it makes one feel lost in the jungle, which I suppose may have been what he was going for. Marlowe tells the tale of going to Africa, working for a company to bring ivory back to England. The young riverboat captain is charged with the task of retrieving ivory from the mysterious Kurtz, who, by all accounts of everyone, is a very great man. In fact, he seems to be able to sway people with just his words. Marlowe seems very excited to meet Kurtz, but once he actually does, he's somewhat disappointed. Not because Kurtz is not a great man and that he's not a great orator. In fact, he is. He has a very powerful voice. But he's kind of a horrible person. Turns out that the methods that Kurtz was using to send these great amounts of ivory back to his managers were a little bit, shall we say, questionable? Unethical? He allowed the cannibal savages, fine fellows cannibals, to worship him as a god, bringing offerings to him, and he would kill them at his leisure. But in the end, Kurtz passes away from illness, and Marlowe seems to feel the need to protect this man's reputation when he returns to society. It seems that he only tells the truth later as he's sitting on a boat telling the story to some fellow men of the sea. Now, I do have to say, I didn't quite enjoy this book until about the last 20 pages. As I said before, there was a lot of descriptive language, and at times I felt it was a bit excessive. In fact, there were some phrases used that it could have really done without, in my opinion. Phrases such as a lugubrious drollery. But after I was finally able to hack my way through a jungle of a story told by a loquacious sailor, I found that I actually enjoyed the plot of the story. So all in all, I didn't hate it, but it wasn't the best thing I've ever read. It was good. It was very well written, but it wasn't for me. Now, it may be for you. So if you liked the book, please leave a comment down below. Uh, there's a comment section, or you can leave a video response. Uh, you can tweet me on Twitter. It's at Mark Jones Audio. As usual, the hashtag for this series is right down here in the corner. So next week's book is The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. Uh, I've read it before, but it was over 15 years ago, so I don't feel like it's cheating to read it for this series. As usual, thanks to Will Driscoll for filming. You can follow him on Twitter, at Pen and Pensive. Once again, thank you for watching Up 52. I'm Mark Jones, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.